Good evening, everybody. This is the regular board meeting of October 17th, 2024. It is now 407. And we'll begin the roll call. Uh, Mary? President Cortezzi? Here. Vice President Doe? Present. Clerk Lay? Here. Member Chavez? Here. Member Edetta? Here. Okay, thank you. Are there any members of the public who would like to provide public comment to the board on a closed session agenda item at this time? I don't see anybody here, but do we have any on online or in Zoom? Okay. Then uh, I think we get to skip all this and we just will um, recess to closed session. We are back from our uh, executive session and we will resume our open session with the Pledge of Allegiance. If you all please join me. Okay, welcome to the regular board meeting of October 17th, 2024. Uh, members of the public, please submit your public comment as follows. In-person public comment may be made here in the boardroom by filling out a public speaker request form located at the entrance of the room. It looks like this. Uh, the Darker golden ones are for adults and the light yellow, the yellow ones are for students. And that's because we hear students first so they can get on with their evening and do homework or whatnot. Uh, if you're on Zoom, you may raise your virtual hand to request to speak and offer comment in real time. And whether you're in Zoom or here, you'll have two minutes to speak. Um, you may also submit comments electronically online before or during the meeting with a 1000 character limit by accessing the agenda link to the form on the district's homepage. Please reference the agenda number, item number in your written comment. Please note that special, regular and special meetings of the Board of Trustees and Board Study Sessions are streamed live on meeting nights and are also available for viewing the day after the meeting by accessing the district's YouTube channel listed on the district's webpage at esuhsd.org under the quick links section. The board is not able to respond to items that are not on the agenda or any personnel issues. Your comment will be read into the record and will be directed to the superintendent and or the appropriate staff member for response. Interpretation of this meeting in Spanish and Vietnamese can be heard by accessing the link and following the instructions shown on the agenda and the district's website. Okay. Uh, now we move on to 501. Superintendent, is there are there any items that we will be pulling from this evening's agenda? There is nothing that we'll be pulling from the agenda, but we are going to later at 8.01 request that some items be considered out of order. Uh, one of those is 6.01, which arrives before 801. So <laughs> for, for that purpose, I'm just going to go ahead and list them now. Okay. Uh, we're going to ask that 6.01 be moved to 1101. Okay, hold on. Let me write this down so I can. Got it. Okay, so after 1101, we'll have 601. What is currently 601 will become 1101. Okay, very good. What is currently 1302 number nine only. Yep and only number nine of 1302 will be moved to 803. Okay. And then we're going to just invert, uh, we're gonna do 902 before we do 901. 902 and 901, we'll just switch them. Got it. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. All right, so our friends who are here for 601 will be here, will be with us for a while. We're waiting some from some for some friends from San Francisco to arrive. So okay, well, you're you're more than welcome. We're delighted to have you here. So, moving on to seven oh one, this would be a report from our student board representative, Katie. Hi, everyone. Uh, What's going on with her SGB? 
Hi, everyone. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't make it to the last meeting, but um, Vice Chair Jaslyn, she led a productive meeting where um, SGB representatives broke into different committees and formula started to formulate plans. So the mental health committee has a goal to collaborate with other groups for district-wide mental health events, um, as well as leveraging our Insta account to post infographics and be more active. And then for the community involvement committee, um, they have begun to plan and brainstorm an AAPI festival in May, um, including clubs and students from around the community and district. And then the Academics Resources Committee sent an email to all activity directors to update AP info on their website um, and are still brainstorming more ideas. So we only have like two or three, I think, more meetings left of the school year, but everyone's really excited to start working on the plans. Two or three more meetings of the semester, right? Oh, God, you took my breath away. All right. Of the... That's right. Thank you. Thank you for that update. Okay, now we are moving on to um, 801, which we already did. So 802 is consideration, discussion, and or approval of waiver of facility use fees per board policy 1330. And... Um, so this is a, an event that I will be hosting for the Black Leadership Kitchen Cabinet in December at uh, Foothill High School. They're holding a, a meeting and an event at Hooper Hall, right? So um, just asking my colleagues for a, a motion. Well, oh, wait, Mary had- Before, so before we take a vote, we do have a um, person who'd like to make a public comment. Oh, very good. <laughs> Okay, thank Recording you. Recording Nunez, if you have uh, two minutes to speak. Thank you so much, Superintendent. Uh, good evening, esteemed board members. My name is Meredith Curry Nunez, and as a member of the Black Leadership Kitchen Cabinet of the Silicon Valley, I call in a support of agenda item number 8.02, and uh, really want to thank you, Board President Patty Cortezzi, for championing our request to host the BLKC Cabinet's year-end meeting at Foothill High School on December 5th. Uh, the Black Leadership Kitchen Cabinet of Silicon Valley is comprised of community-based organizations, agencies, business, businesses, sororities, fraternities, social groups, and individual community members who all work collaboratively to support, sustain, and improve the lives of African ancestry population within Santa Clara County. So thank you so much for bringing this to the board. Have a good evening. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your comment, um, and it is my honor to support this event. I've been uh, working with the Black Leadership Kitchen Cabinet for many years and um, really appreciate the work you do and very happy to support in this way. So, I, My motion to move for approval of 8.02. Second. I have a motion by Doe, second by Lay. Thank you. Um, Katie, how do you vote? Board? Aye. 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 Okay. That's unanimous. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. That passes unanimously. And now we're moving on to um, 1302. We're pulling item number nine specifically. And yes, the uh, rest of that item will remain on consent. We're just pulling this one item. <clears throat> well, it's not consent. It's it's or excuse me from the from the later item we're from just the, pulling this from the regular agenda, right? So when we get to 13, I know we'll be just omission, om omitting number nine. Go ahead. Like to make a statement for yes, this please. one specifically. So this is to disclose publicly that I am employed by Teach for America, which is a nonprofit as vice president. And I'm asking that this disclosure be included in the official minutes of this meeting and the official records of this district. Uh, to comply with the state conflict of interest rules, I will recuse myself from any consideration, discussion, and action regarding the proposed partnership with Teach for America, and will leave the room to allow the board to consider the proposed contract outside of my presence. Just on this item, yes. Just, yeah, just on this item, so then we don't have to accidentally overlook it later or something. So there's a, a motion by Herrera, second by Doe. All in favor? Aye. Oh, I'm sorry, Katie, how would you vote on the contract for Teach for America? Oh, what's happening? Oh, so this is a this is a, ordinarily a pretty standard item. This is we have we have a contract with Teach for America to um, help us recruit and train teachers. And um, 
it would ordinarily be very routine, except that she works for Teach for America. And so it's like a conflict if she's voting in her own interest, in the interest of her own organization, right? So I love that you asked that question. That's an excellent question. So that's what we're doing tonight. We're just, she just stepped out so that no one can later say, hey, wait a minute, you, you know, you were you're trying to benefit yourself and your own organization. And so. under item 13.02, approving contracts for professional service, that's one of them listed. Later, we'll take action on the rest of all of them. Yeah, okay, so how do you vote? Okay, um, all those board all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you all. Well, what I call it. But by do, by separate this item is allow our uh, our colleague to vote with the rest of us and all the other items. Okay, so now we are moving on to nine o two, and then we'll hear nine o one after that because we need to hold the public hearing first. So I somewhere have a script, I think. There we go. Um, all right. We will now hold a public hearing, which is scheduled at approximately, well, it's scheduled at 6.30, but we're going to have it at 6.20. Uh, regarding resolution 2024-25. Adam President, due to the due to the issue of time, uh, we can hold a, meet, uh, a public hearing after the scheduled time. Oh, but, but not, not before. before. Okay, so let's hold off on uh, on item nine until 6.30. How about that? Okay, so we're gonna move to item 10, and I do, which is um, a public comment. Members of the public may address the board on any subject not on tonight's agenda. However, provisions of the Brown Act preclude any action. As an unagendized item, no response is required from the board or district staff and no action can be taken. However, the board may instruct the superintendent to agendize the item for a future meeting. Any person may address the board on any item on the meeting agenda. Persons wishing to address the board may participate and comment as follows. In-person public comment may be made in person in the meeting room by filling out a public speaker reform request form at the room's entrance. When your name is called, please come to the podium and state your name for the record. If you're on Zoom, you may raise your virtual hand and request to speak and offer comment in real time. You will have two minutes to speak. Persons may also filled out, fill out a speaker request form via online submission on the district's homepage. No. Um, Is that on the board page or the home page, Mary? Home page. Okay, very good. Comments should be limited to no more than 1,000 characters in length. Please reference in your submission the agenda item number for your comment. Your comment will be read out loud as part of the public meeting. And we do have one speaker on this item. And so I call forward Mr. Julio Pardo, who actually gets five minutes to speak because he is a representative of one of our bargaining units. Do you want all eight? I don't know. <laughs> well, make it true. Julio Pardo, President of CSCA, Chapter 187. Uh, I'm up here because I'm not sure if anything has come towards the, the board here, but I've been called by several members about um, it's just an error that was made by all of us. And uh, it has to do with payroll because of some, uh, some people were overpaid a little bit because of uh, something we thought was going to happen, which, which we didn't ever came to an agreement on. And it just went forward and it went forward. It, it, it shouldn't have gone forward, but it, it went forward because we just miscommunicate with each other. And so a lot of these people are being asked to pay money back, which we understand. And it's getting, uh, I think someone might be writing to you the, I don't know if they've done, but they've told me they were going to write to you. And I just want to let you know that there are some things that, yes, I agree with them. Some things, no, I don't agree with them. For instance, some people want to pay back, like, let's say, five cents a month. That's kind of ridiculous. So um, at the same time, a lot of people cannot afford to pay back all the money at one time. 
So we're, we're working with the district to try to see how we can get it done. We let people know they can call the district individually to meet with them and try to get, uh, try to get this issue resolved for themselves. And uh, I have talked with the district and we know what's going on. So if you do get these messages, once you know we are working it, we're trying to do our best to resolve for everybody so that everyone gets what they need to have done. Other than that, um, I ask you all to make sure you vote in the election because this is gonna be an important one for, for our nation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one written comment. Oh, very good. Online public comment from parent Stephen Chang. I am filing an official complaint regarding issues involving a teacher at Evergreen Valley High School, along with concerns about actions by former principal, current principal in the Eastside Union High School District. The inadequate response from the school and district has caused significant distress to my son and myself. Despite multiple complaints, no action has been taken. How can a taxpayer-funded institution maintain secrecy and cover up misconduct for years? This undermines transparency. Furthermore, I also question the protocols that allowed selective student transfers out of the teacher's class as this raises concerns about fairness and accountability by the school principal. That is the end of online public comment. Thank you, and no Zoom comment, right? There is none. Okay, thank you. And um, okay, we we can go on to 11.01, .01, which is the superintendent's report and update. Just to let the board know that earlier we went out the contract with West Ed to do a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Thank you, an assessment of our, our, our campuses and safety and some of our protocols. They've collected the data and are currently putting that report together and we'll be sharing it at a future meeting. Do we know how soon? Uh, they have begun the work of compiling everything. So I'm going to guess it's going to take probably after the, the winter break. Okay, great. I'll look forward to hearing about that. Um, okay, that brings us to 601, but I'm not sure I saw anybody come in. Are we, are we ready or are we still waiting for people waiting. to arrive? I think we can move on with 1102. Oh, fine. That's fine. I'll just, um, if someone could sig signal me when they, when your group is all here, you, you can do that, right? Okay. When they're all, when you're all here, we'll, we will, um, we'll recognize you. Okay. Let's move on then to 1102, which is discussion and our action to approve the lease termination agreement. Superintendent, you want to just give us a brief. Yeah. In 2022, San Jose State and the Eastside Union High School District, we entered into a joint use lease agreement to house San Jose State's Healthy Development Community Clinic. And that was at Oak Grove High School. And there is some success there and there's some attention there. And then there were dollars that went away from the state. So San Jose State University is unable to maintain the services that were provided earlier due to the budget cuts. Um, and so they're asking that they could uh, to terminate that lease agreement um, because it was a multi-year agreement. We're suggesting, yes, let's terminate that. We'll use the building for other purposes to our design and also want to keep a strong partnership with our friends in the Spartan East Side problem. Agreed. I, we just need a motion. Do we have a motion by Chavez, second by Doe? Katie, how do you vote? Okay, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 And that's unanimous, thank you. Okay, and it's still not 6.30, so we'll move on to uh, 12.01, .02, discussion and our action to receive and adopt the second reading of proposed amendments to board policy 5145.7 7 on sexual harassment and receive amendments to administrative regulation 5145.7 sex discrimination and sex-based harassment. This is a second reading. Um, we this was we heard the first reading uh, at our last board meeting and I don't recall there being any changes. So I think I'm just looking for a motion. Uh, moved by Doe, second by Lay. Katie, how do you vote? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. 1202, discussion and or action to receive and adopt the second reading of proposed amendments to board policies in alignment with charter school authorization and renewal as follows. Oh my goodness. Uh, 0420.4, 0420.41, 0420.41E, 0420.42, and 0420.43. 
And this is a second reading. Uh, so I we're just looking for a uh, motion. Motion by Doe, second by Herrera. Katie, how do you vote? All in favor? Okay, that's unanimous. And I think, it is it 638? 629 by my phone. All right, we'll do one more. 1203, discussion and our action to receive the first reading of proposed amendments to board policies in alignment with special education as follows. Uh, 0430, 5145.9, 6159, 6164.4, and 6164.5, including a proposed deletion of board policy 4112.23, shared teaching assignments. Um, now, this is the first reading, so we're just looking for any comments. There is uh, online comment. Okay. Online, online public comment by staff member Thomas Brittendahl. Some of the proposed changes to board policy 6159 are potentially problematic or simply unneeded as federal law already outlines the IEP team's authority to make educational placements, authority that board policy cannot supersede. By adding language such as, quote, to the maximum extent possible, end quote, and changing language from, quote, the least restrictive environment which meets the student's needs to the extent provided by law, end quote, to, quote, the least restrictive environment with non-disabled students, end quote, the district is attempting to continue to push to place students in the general education classroom as a default position. The merits of this policy approach is dubious at best, with much of the data suggesting that outcomes for special ed students have worsened over the previous years as this push-in method has unfolded. I encourage further discussion on all things related to special education with various stakeholder groups as few issues are as important to the well-functioning of our schools as is special education. That is the end of online public comment on this item. Okay, thank you for that. Um, today is a first reading. Today's a first reading, so this would be a time to uh, give input if anybody has. And we can bring some explanation as to why that language is for the second reading. Okay. Very good. Any Any other feedback? before we move on? Okay. So um, we can either hear the, do the public hearing or we can hear 601 if we're ready. Uh, so <clears throat> so we we'll go do the public hearing. Sure. Okay. Okay, we'll wait a couple more minutes, that's fine. So now we're gonna move on to um, 9.02 because it is 631. So um, now, we will now hold a public hearing, which is scheduled at approximately 6.30 regarding resolution 2024-2025-07 regarding the sufficiency of textbooks and instructional materials. Um, we're just taking public comment. Seeing none, calling for public speakers a second time calling for public speakers a third time and there's no one online or no written comment. Okay. Uh, if no one speaks on the item, oh, there's being no persons present who are interested in providing testimony, the public testimony portion of this item is now closed. Okay, that means we can move now to 901, which is discussion and or action to adopt resolution 2024, slash 2025-07 regarding the sufficiency of textbooks and instructional materials. So this is a the standard item just looking for. We have a resolution and a letter from the county informing us that we have been that we have deemed have been deemed sufficient or have sufficient textbooks for students. So we're asking you just to approve that resolution. Perfect. Second. Okay, I have a motion by Doe, second by Chavez. Katie, how do you vote? Okay, all all in favor? Aye. Okay, <clears throat> very good. And we're still waiting a couple minutes, right? Okay, very good. We'll move then ahead to 1204, which is discussion and or action to receive the first reading of proposed amendments to board policy 5022, student and family privacy rights. Again, this is a first reading, so we're just looking for input or any discussion but we won't be taking any action tonight. Are there any comments online? 
colleagues, do you have any any comments I, on this? I had a question. Oh, please. Looking at the first reading draft, when it says that the superintendent or designee may collect, disclose, or use to students' personal information, what is what exactly is the personal information here? Great question. Can you see right here is what you're talking about? Yeah, that little chunk where it says use students' personal information for the exclusive purpose of. So there's certain data that is within our system that's called this kind of directory data. Where what is your name? Where do you live? Right. Then there's other. Then there might be other designations of data. Do you have an individualized education plan? Um, does or do you receive free and reduced uh, or qualify for free and reduced lunch? We're able to collect that data. But we're not able to share it out. We can only use that data internally with a great deal of privacy to make decisions that are in the best interest of our students. So when we know that last year we had nearly 1,000 unhoused students um, among our 20,000 students, that makes us have to react differently than if that number were 50, right? So we can't go around and distribute someone's very personal data, just make it public to the public, but we can use it internally to make decisions about how we wanna go forward, how we wanna allocate resources and what programs we might emphasize. Thank you. Thank you. We do also provide that to the governments when it comes to fees and reduced lunch because it's part of the, you know, to be compliant and also to receive the funding that we receive. Yes, once again, so it's in the similar match, we can't, we don't just share it to share it. We share it because of how it affects funding levels and what we might qualify for as a district. Mm -hmm. They have similar obligations to maintain privacy and confidentiality as well. And I acknowledge, Katie, you might be the first board representative who has actually asked a question about a first reading of a policy. That's awesome. It is. In yeah. fact, that is uh, a great mark of a successful process. All right. So thank you for the question. Um, and we're still waiting, right? Okay. Okay, that's perfect. We have a, about a 10 minute presentation. So we will hear uh, 1301 presentation and or discussion regarding the district use of solar and water conservation efforts. And it says 15, but I bet you could do it in 10, Mr. Huynh. No, I'm, I'm gonna beat you to that because I, I love the, the pacing and cadence of this meeting. So it's gonna be like two and a half minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Tom Huynh, Associate Superintendent of Business Services for Eastside Union High School District, uh, Superintendent, the board member. Um, this is just a brief presentation uh, based on a request about our usage so far of solar and water conservation efforts. If you go on to the next slide, please. We, we operate 16 physical sites in our district, 11 comprehensives, two alternative locations, uh, two adult ed centers, and the education center um, that comprises of 16. 15 out of those 16 uh, have solar installations uh, at those sites. The one site that doesn't is our, our education center. Um, in 20... 10, uh, Eastside underwent the largest um, energy conservation and solar program in the nation among K-12 institutions. Uh, at the time, we expended roughly $24.1 million to fund those all those installations of solar panels. Uh, 9.5 of it came from facilities or bond funds. The other 14.6 was through a loan that was paid off um, over time through the savings that we realized from the solar generation uh, on our sites. Um, according to Engie, that's the company that, that previous, previously was uh, Optera, previously was Chevron, uh, who does the monitoring installation for us. According to their data and their metrics, um, based on the past 13 years, they've estimated that we've saved about $31.5 .5 million uh, through both solar production and energy efficiency. Um, and the energy efficiencies are, you know, automatic light switches, LED lighting, et cetera, versus, you know, the fluorescence and, and whatnot. Um, in the uh, part of this presentation, there, there are two other attachments in this document that has a greater detail, but it just gives you a snippet of our guaranteed production and what we have actually produced in the past 13 or so years. Uh, and thus far, every year, except for one, we have exceeded our solar production uh, beyond the guarantee that was uh, initially offered by by NG. Um, and that deficiency came in 21-22. We investigated and figured out what happened during that time period. 
And there was a there was an inver failure at Independence High School, which is one of our larger arrays that caused a, 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 a drop in production. There were also two locations that um, had solar uh, solar panel damages because of, of trucks running into the you know um, the base of it because clearance is not that high. It's like nine and a half feet, and sometimes uh, these box trucks deliver vehicles who who don't make that wide enough turn uh, will damage these panels, and so. Um, during that year, we had two locations that had that damage. That damage it, it was at Evergreen and Overfell that caused the decrease. And so, um, but every other year, we've exceeded the the guarantee from from NG as far as our solar production. Okay, um, there's greater detail in those reports. Okay, but what was the gap in time that, from the moment the incident to the moment we figured out to to address it? Obviously, if someone run into it, that's easy. But the internet, the inverter not working in the independent high school, when did we figured that out? And, and That's a it? great question. I don't have that, but I can find out of what the response time was just for that. Yeah, you're right. The first the first two is easy. Solar panels fell down, called insurance, get it fixed, right? right. Um, but as far as like what, the inverse is a little tricky because we don't know when, you know, um, it went what out. What even would let you know? I mean, yeah, unless we have someone actively monitoring the production on a daily basis, we really, we really wouldn't know. Um, so, I wonder yeah. how they caught it. Never mind. Another good question. Taking out of your two and a half minutes. So, <laughs> so Tom, I, 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 I don't mean you know we we have people um, checking on a regular basis. That's that's sure. that, but there may be mechanisms that can be in place and that we would be able. The, the the idea is because this was installed in 2010. Solar panel does not have unlimited lifespan. Right. It's in the next few years. The lifespan of some of these solar panels may become in questions, in which case we may want to have me mechanisms so that our staff are not checking on a regular basis. Right. We get the annual report from NG that that has the the annual production and uh, overall thus far we're we're in the net positive about by, by six point five million kilowatt hours. <clears throat> um, so overall, we we are producing more than that was what was guaranteed. You have a question? So yeah, uh, I know that before we had a solar. Uh, project on the um, parking, um, but I don't know that we have one of those buildings, uh, you know, because we have a, a lot of sunshine and we can utilize, you know, the solar and energy, uh, but I don't know that we can add on or we just want to keep it away that we have in 2010. So we'll be able to save a little bit more now. We have more and energy, and we have much more uh, option that we have in 2010, right? Yeah. So part of the challenge of installing solar panels on rooftops um, is the engineering behind it, right? And a lot of our buildings were built uh, without the notion of adding that additional weight onto those facilities. And anytime you add weight onto an overhead component, you have to go to DSA, which requires approval. So when we installed our solar panels, uh, for the most part, we're actually all of it were done in parking lot parking structures lot. Yes. Um, that although required DSA approval, doesn't require the re-engineering of our buildings. And so that's why we didn't do it on the buildings. As far as can we look at some possibilities of some, maybe some newer buildings that can you know, can perhaps accommodate that without your know, re-engineering whatnot, we can look into that. I can have the bond team examine and see what the feasibility of that is. Um, but that's something we we, we could explore. Just like all of those new student union that we have right now, you know, in our district, so we can have those addition solar project on that, right? We, in theory, yes, <laughs> but those buildings have either already been built or underway, and um, what the state uh, division of architects approved was a building that did not have that additional load. So, if there's, for example, if there's going to be a future building. Uh, if the request is, hey, let's look at potentially adding solar onto a future building, then again, we can examine that and see what the feasibility are, what the additional cost is, and and how that offsets. Um, but as far as our existing building, it is an additional challenge because there's, like I said, the engineering and the state approval process. Mm -hmm. The next slide is just another example. Like, so you have a much more detailed of this um, per site, but it just shows as far as what was per expected and then what was actually produced. This was at, at Independence Adult, uh, Adult Education Center. Um, in regards to our water conservation efforts, um, with our new construction, um, we've switched over to essentially all drip irrigation. 
Um, and it's rare that we install traditional lawns, traditional lawns that, as we know it, grass, you know, aside from our play fields and whatnot. On our campuses, we rarely do uh, lawns when we do new, new landscaping uh, and any kind of modernization, uh, modernizations of our landscaping. Um, the next slide shows one example at ATP North, which is right outside of our building. Um, those are all drought resistant plants that we use. Um, although they are on drip irrigation, if the drip line were to fail, those plants would still survive because they're, they're drought resistant. Um, a lot of succulents are, are used. Uh, everything on the right in that red box are all the plantings, not all, but some of the plantings that we have that require zero water. Um, and so through a process of just smart selection, working with our city forest, working with our um, our local, you know, Santa Clara Valley uh, water companies, et cetera, um, and identifying, you know, species and plantings that require very little or zero water, it helps offset with our um, our water usage. And also lastly, just some very strategic uses of what we call lawn or field alternatives. Um, these are essentially um, artificial, artificial lawn alternatives at various sites. Some of the examples are a uh, little area at Andrew Hill near their science building. Uh, these areas have all become very popular spots for our students to, um, to hang out. Uh, at YB, that area used to be a large half acre lawn. Uh, it's now a garden or a learning garden with drought resistant plantings. Um, then the next three images at Piedmont, Foothill, and Silver Creek, those are all non-lawns. They're, they're not real grass. And so all of those areas have become very popular hangout locations. So they've been extremely successful for our students. Uh, on campus. The next steps, uh, we will continue to look, look at uh, and to strategically replace lawns with lawn alternative solutions. That could be that turf that I mentioned, that could be with the rock gardens, succulents, et cetera. Uh, adhere to planning guidelines of drought resistant and native species. Examine the feasibility of installing solar at the education center. And, and as uh, board member Lay said, maybe look at some new structures that can accommodate rooftop solar. Um, and then continue to work with Santa Clara Water District and our city forest to plant native trees and convert lawns into trout friendly spaces. Thank you for the presentation. I, I just have one quick one. Um, I've been reading a lot. It's, there, there's been more of a presence in the media about concerns with artificial lawns. You know, yeah. the, the forever chemicals and what do you do after the, the lawn? Because it doesn't last forever, you know, and it's got to go somewhere and... So I, I think that's something we need to probably contemplate at some point as yeah. a district. Um, I know, cause I know some of our, these are little lawns you're talking yeah, about. They're small scale. Little, but um, you know, we were talking about surf turf fields. That's a big investment then. And then a, a big environmental, some questions that we need probably need to consider. So. Yeah. And we'll wait for guidance from the County and, and the state as far as what they do right now, it's still very, they're very indecisive as far as where they want to go, and we'll wait for them and see what we what, how we respond to them. Thank you. If I may make a comment, um, as one individual board member, I know on page two we have a combinations of um, uh, nine nine point five in visit the bond fund and versus fourteen point six on general fund. This is happened in two thousand ten. Should ever something ever come up in the future for this one board member, I'm hoping we will consider when it's legal and appropriate. Um, to spend, uh, make the investment from the bond and not from the general fund, where when it's appropriate and legal. Yeah, it's it's appropriate and legal if it's if there's language in the bond when we issued it and passed the bond that allows for such infrastructure upgrades. That's what makes it legal and appropriate. Um, and then we can certainly examine that moving forward. On this page, it looks like total cost says right there with both bond and general fund about twenty four. But we've saved thirty-one, so about ten million in savings. Seven-ish, yeah. Seven-ish million, um, that would have come from the general fund, right? Correct. Okay. With, with all respect, uh, that's a cost. That's a time value of money. So when you calculate, you don't take thirty-one you minus twenty-four. It doesn't quite work because <clears> it's <throat> essentially fifteen years later or fourteen years later. So the calculation doesn't quite work. Like you take the one math, you take one and you minus the other. But there's a significant savings regardless, right? Yeah. Maybe. From this. Uh, maybe. That's so, a different calculation that, that I would encourage us to reevaluate when we make decisions. So the bottom line is actually on page three, because as far as the saving dollars with energy rates fluctuating from year to year, it's it's very hard to quantify. Um, but the key aspect of it is when these when this company went to us in 2010, they said you you will we will guarantee you a certain production level 
we've met or exceeded that prediction level. And that's the important aspect of it. Oh, so 13. That's what we should be looking at? Page three? Three. three. Yeah. Um, those are not dollars. Those are, yeah, 13, you're, we're in year 13, correct? Okay. Yeah, and so far, we've netted 6.5 million kilowatt hours in excess of what was promised as, as far as the, the production of our, our systems. Awesome. I would like to say that um, thank you for the presentation. Um, Associate Superintendent Tom Wynn and Julio Lucas, uh, Senior Manager of the MAC program. Um, I, I think it's, uh, this is the project or the presentation that I request. Uh, and I uh, really want to see in the future, do we have any plan for a solar project as well as for the water conservative? Because uh, we do need, uh, you know, have a long-term plan. Because now take a look of the past. We learn how much that we save, but we're gonna move on to the future. So we need to have a long-term plan to looking for on the other alternative way to save you know, electricity as well as energy uh, and the water. So I, that's my recommendation. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. And I think that uh, 6.01, the all uh, the committee member are here. I think first I would like to invite Tuyen Fang, he's the uh, um, event coordinator first to say a few words uh, to, um, our board as well. And after that, we invite all of those uh, uh, organizing committee members uh, who will receive the certificate of acknowledgement uh, and present uh, the additional checks. Good evening, everyone. Um, on behalf of the Moon Festival, it's been my honor to be here again this year um, to see all of you. And then also appreciate and then want to say thank you to everyone, Mr. Superintendent, Board Trustee, and then also Andrew Hill, um, Principal Jose Hernandez, Associate Principal Long Chung Tan uh, all his staff, and also Mr. Julio Bardo from CSEA that helping us the first time we have our event at uh, Andrew Hill, and it was really successful. We thanks for, for everyone for your support. Thank you so much. And hopefully next year we'll be here again and then continue to support everyone. Well, and thank you for um, not only providing such an incredible, um, keeping up with such an incredible tradition for our community, but also uh, all you do for our uh, students that are struggling with homelessness and supporting them, is it's really fantastic. It was a great event. It was hot. <laughs> <laughs> We, we started early with dance contests and keeping the culture alive. And I just really appreciate that uh, and allowing everybody able to have a central focus and be able to keep the culture alive and share it with others. Um, I don't know if the board like to come down and Vaughn, if you'd like to get read out the names of the certificates for yes. all those that are going to receive a certificate. Right. I have there a, was a special I part in the evening as well when um, when the organizing committee came forward and presented a check um to the east side that we then give to the east side education foundation to support our unhoused students mm -hmm. and this this check is what we use every year to put the word out in the community hey the moon festival organizing committee has donated this much can you join to that so thank you again for taking the lead in in organizing that form of support for our students let me uh, uh read the list um we have samantha quinn hung trang Catherine Anthotrang, Shiva Pham, Yvonne Fang, Monica Tate, Katie Nguyen, Kit Nguyen, Michael Vu, Kang Pham, Khan Linh Trang, Tuyen Fang, and the list of the adults who support the uh, organizing committee is Cam Bình Nguyen, Cong Pham, Thi Minh Dung, Quỳnh Anh Nguyen, Lily Doan, Thảo Nguyen, Tiffany Trang. Some of them will not be here today, but whoever here, Please come up and join us. And I know that Ms. Gumbin will have an additional check. Uh, I believe it's 2,000 more uh, uh, <laughs> um, above the 10,000 that they present to Superintendent Glenn Van Der Zee at the event. Uh, and so we can take a picture. Thank you. Plus two. The picture is okay.
Let's do it back. Yeah. It's uh somebody has a birthday today, which is uh the event coordinator. So happy birthday to him. <laughs> Enjoy celebration tonight. I, now you can go do the celebration. Uh, you know, your part is over. You don't have to stay here to listen to our meeting. But, we, but you feel welcome. <laughs> Come, you want to give that board? Come, you give that board to uh, Mr. Glenn Vandersey. <laughs> okay. I, in the interest of moving on, um, 1302, uh, this is just a routine item, so we'll carry on even though our 
board colleague has, has stepped out. Uh, this is contracts over 25,000 minus item number nine. I need a motion. Second. Okay, I got a motion by Lay, second by Chavez. Katie, how do you vote? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. 1303, discussion and or action to approve the use of piggybacks for general purchasing. This is, um, so for the record, Mr. Quinn, can you just give me like a one minute, just for the general public, what piggybacks are? So piggyback contracts are contracts that have been previously approved by other districts and entities that have gone through the vetting process already. That way that ensures compliance with public contracting code. And so um, it enables us to purchase and acquire products and services at a much more efficient process. And that's a system that the state has established in order to provide districts with that, that power and authority. So it's efficient and cost effective. Yes. Got it. Okay. I just need a motion. Move for approval. Okay. I have a motion by Doe, second by Chavez. Katie, how do you vote? All in favor? Thank you. Uh, 1304, discussion and or action to approve and adopt second reading of proposed amendments to board bylaws 9270E, conflict of interest code, designated positions slash disclosure, disclosure categories, and board bylaw 9270E, resolution 2024-2025-05, adopting a conflict of interest code. So this is a second reading of a policy by a board bylaw that we looked at last time. So I just need a motion. A uh, move by Doe, second by Herrera. Katie, how do you vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, we are nothing under 14, 1501, discussion and or action to approve the bond capital project contracts over 50,000. Second. Okay, motion by Herrera, second by Doe. Katie, how do you vote? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that's unanimous. Thank you. 1502, discussion and or action to approve the design build services uh, RFP 012425 for the district-wide infrastructure synthetic turf fields. Looks like this is for EV, uh, Evergreen, Independence, Mount Pleasant, Silver Creek, and Overfelt. Project to design builder, Robert A. Bothman Construction. Move for approval. So, um, just, like just, yeah. just, just a super quick question. So this, this we are replacing turf fields um, and we've gone through a design build process. So that means that it's the, the bidding and the designing is all in one process. Okay, very good. Uh, I'm sorry, did, there was a motion? Yes. By Doe? By Doe. Yes. Okay. Second by, by Leigh, thank you. Uh, Katie, how do you vote? All in favor? Aye. aye. Again, I'm saying I with the caveat of at some point I would like to look at. Um, we could always engage the, in a the nature of discussion. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Okay, we're up to the consent calendar. I just need a motion. Second. Okay, motion by Herrera, second by Doe. Katie, how do you vote? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Did I get an eye over there? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I think by the time we get to him, it's a we're day. Almost, we're almost at that level, um, member Herrera. Um, okay. <laughs> that means that we are now at 2102. Receive annual developer. This is reports. Uh, we were receiving the annual developer fee report for 2324. Um, so that's available for any board member who would like to look at that. Uh, 2202 future items. Oh, 2201 is opportunity for board members to request items for future addendums. Do we have any requests? I do want to remind you that we will be starting to start this uh, site presentations, which will then you know occupy and will also yes. address some of the issues that have been raised. Fantastic. I Looking forward to that. Thank you for that. Okay. 
That means we are now at 2301 uh, board comments. So I will begin uh, with Trustee Chavez and move this way. No comment. Okay, thank you. Member Lay. I just want to say thank you, everyone, staff, administrators, uh, especially um, CSEA President Julio Pardo, as well as strong support for the Moon Festival, which is this year will be 33rd anniversary. Uh, that's been a long time, and uh, I'm glad that all the students that participated and keep the tradition as well as the contest. Uh, to And also, they want to learn the leadership uh, from the Moon Festival, appreciate one of the certificate of acknowledgement to the younger generation who step up uh, to carry the task, the big task. Thank you, everyone. No comment. No comment. Um, okay, my comment is just the next time we meet will be after November 5th. So in the meantime, we hope that everybody goes out and exercises their civic duty and uh, and and your right as a member of this community and uh, and vote, please. Superintendent. Oh no, Katie, I'm sorry, 2302, Katie. Uh, uh, I don't have uh, a comment, thank you. Okay, thank you. Superintendent. I uh, just wanna thank everybody for surviving through the heat of the last couple of weeks and still getting to it. Um, we had a fantastic part of that heat, that heat spell. We had our college and career night over at Independence and that, that was an amazing event and a lot of people in that gym and it was warm, uh, but a lot of good information was shared. Please be looking, uh, seniors, please be looking for an invitation to participate in a webinar hosted with San Jose State University and our counseling staff about how to apply for that Spartan Eastside Promise, how to make it a possibility and what um, outreach they can do to help support you in your application and financial aid. This is completely an opportunity only available to Eastside students. We hope they take advantage talk about our students, we also talk about our amazing teachers and we look forward on the 21st of October to join other districts from the County, Santa Clara County Office of Education, recognizing teachers of the year and our representative is a quality educator and can't wait to see that person honored there. Great. Um, the, so the board will be um, recessing again to uh, executive session, uh, but Council, Council, would you like to report on on what we've done so far? Yes, thank you. Closed session item 2.05, the board on motion by member Lay, second by member Herrera, unanimously approved a notice, final notice of dismissal and statement of charges for one classified employee. Closed session item 2.07, after motion by member Herrera, second by member Lay, the board unanimously voted to reject the claim of G. Perez. There are no further actions to report. Thank you. And as I mentioned, uh, we will be uh, recessing to closed session, but there will be no reportable uh, actions in, in this in this closed session. So uh, with that, I will say good evening to everyone here and uh, look forward to seeing you at our next board meeting. So uh, we are just returned from executive session and there's nothing to report. And this meeting is adjourned at 8, 10 p.m. <laughs>